Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Sharla. I'm Christy. Today we are talking about dumb and go crock pot meals. Do you know what that reminds me of? Legally Blonde, when she does the pickup and snatch. Now, how does she say it? Bend and snap. Bend and snap. <laughs> dump and go. <laughs> Bend and snap. <laughs> dump and go. Um, people sometimes don't like to associate the word dump with their food. We get comments about that all the time. Stop saying dump. <laughs> um, but do you know what? We're not thinking of it that way. We're literally no. dumping cans and dumping meat and dumping spices. You're dumping your ingredients in your bag. And then you're and dumping your bag yes. into your crock pot. We're taking that a step further. And it's like dump and, and dump. snap. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. Anybody can do it. <laughs> and it's going to increase your success rate. <laughs> it is going to increase your dinner success rate by 100%. And you could get that cute FedEx driver. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even watched it recently, clearly, since I forgot that it was Bend and Snap. But, you know, <laughs> still love the movie. Still love Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> and I bet you she makes freezer meals. Actually, well, she's super down homey. Yeah, she is. She likes Southern cooking. She's, she's a good mom. Club. She's got the book. We're in a book club. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we have a book club. Okay. I might have some on the weekend. So, this is a funny story. I'm sorry. We're not talking about meals yet. We will we'll get, get there. there. <laughs> okay. Christy was hosting book club, and this is a book club that has only had, this is the third meeting, but I missed the first two because right. I was away on a trip with my husband's work, and then I don't remember why I missed the second one, and I read both those books. And so, I was prepared, but didn't go. This one... I said to Christy, I'm not going to have time to read the book, but since it's at your house, I'll go anyway. I wanted so, to bring food. So, right? food. like, you have to come because it's appetizers, right? <laughs> and yeah, I've and I of, want her. I want her there, of right. course. Right, and yes. like, I wanted to meet the people, and maybe I thought maybe they'll talk a little bit about those other two books that I actually read. So I thought I'm going to go, and of course I was going to be honest and admit to them that I hadn't read the book because I'm, of course, I'm going to do that. Right, but. Last week, when what? we were you're filming... not going to be like me in grade 10 pretending I read Last of the Mohicans when really <laughs> I just watched the Daniel Day Lewis movie and failed every kind of test that I had on it? <laughs> Continue. Right. So I was like, last week when we were filming, you know, some videos for the YouTube channel here, um, I was asking Christy, like, give me a rundown. Give me the plot of this book. And so she starts telling me. And well, she starts telling me. <laughs> I realized I'd read it like five years ago. So I actually had read this book. And so when I went to book club, I actually knew what I was talking about. That's right. And here's the funny part. Another funny part. I read it probably six months ago or maybe a year ago. Oh, no. I think I, maybe during COVID. Like in 2020, I read the most amount of books I've ever read in my life. And I listen, I'm an, I'm an audiobook person because I can do while I listen. ADHD is fine. And I'm a paper She's person. She's a paper yeah. person. So I was, I had listened to it and completely forgotten everything about the book. I had no idea what happened at any of the plot points, but I gave it a five star rating on Goodreads because I must have really liked it, but I wrote <laughs> zero notes about why I liked it, but it's also a book with twists and turns. You don't want, it's called And Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. And you don't, you can't give it a plot summary during your, your review because you will ruin give the book away. for other people. Yeah. And so there's not a lot about the book in Goodreads, unless you are into spoilers. And so as I'm reading this, I'm like, and we have a, we have a Facebook group for the book club and I'm like, guys, I did not see this coming. I can't believe this happened. And I've read this book before. <laughs> I remembered more from reading it five years ago than she remembered from reading it like a year or two yeah. ago. Like, I don't even know. So it was a good time. And what's funny is we picked that book to death. And I'm not sure anybody actually really enjoyed it by the time we were done. No, but you know, it it, it was twisty. It was twisty. And there, was just, there were a book. few plot holes, but we also kind of... 
we dug through them a little bit too and decided why maybe the author had written it that way and it was a really good book club it was enjoyable it was fun it was fun. okay now we will get to the first recipe because i know you've had to listen about books and you didn't come here to listen about books you Although, came to listen about meals if you have books in your book club and if you're in a book club we want to know because we're both readers and we we like books. Yeah, you can, we can let us know. We can have favorites. a book club one day if you want. <laughs> you know, we're not Oprah, but we could have like a Reese the Witherspoon. Reese Reels 101 book, book club. club. <laughs> it would all be cookbooks. <laughs> is pineapple teriyaki chicken. What I love about this meal is that it's got your vegetables, fruit, because pineapple's fruit, and your protein all in there. And so, really, you just put some rice on and you have a full meal. So in your large freezer bag, you're just going to dump four boneless, skinless chicken breasts that have been cubed, some teriyaki sauce, water, brown sugar, garlic that's minced. We like to use the garlic from a jar because it's pre-minced and it just saves us some time. Some carrots that are peeled and roughly chopped a can of pineapple chunks that's been drained, a red bell pepper that's chopped, a green bell pepper that's chopped, and a can of drained sliced water chestnuts. Do you see how you have like all of the ingredients and there's so many bright colors and there's so many different flavors and you're getting all these vitamins and it's just so good. <laughs> anyway, you're going to squish that all together in your bag to mix it up and then you're going to take the excess air out of the bag because when you're freezer cooking, you never want to have air in your bag because air causes your freezer burn. So you're going to seal that up and put it in the freezer until you're ready to cook it. On the day that you want to cook this, you just thaw it and you're going to take it and dump that bag, just dump the contents, not the actual bag, but the contents of the bag <laughs> into your slow cooker and you're going to slow cook that for three to four hours and dinner is totally done. Now, if you prefer, you can cook it in the oven and that would be you dump it into the casserole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm overdoing the word dump, am I not? That's anyway. what we're here for. The dump and go meals. And so either way, you want to probably serve this over rice or cauliflower rice if if that's your jam. And there you go. So this next one is pretty similar to that in that uh, we are going to dump it into the bag and then we're dumping it into the slow cooker. I think you're going to see the theme here. <laughs> we start it with our bag. We can have a round steak that's been cubed, but you could probably get away with stew meat or like some, you know, cubed up chuck. And um, we're going to add in all the stew things. Carrots, onion, green pepper, garlic, mushrooms, pearl barley, or you can use pot barley if that's what you have on hand. They both do the same job. We just like pearl barley because it's shaped nice. We add in some salt and pepper, some thyme and basil, and a bay leaf. You can add in your beef broth right now, or if you choose to, you can leave it on your pantry shelf and just add it in on the day of cooking so that you can save a little bit of room in your freezer space. And then you seal it all up and then, do you know what you do? You realize that you actually forgot to put the mushrooms in even though you totally read it in the recipe and skipped it all together. So then you open it back up and you add the mushrooms in and then you seal it up for good. And you are going to, again, take all that air out, make sure that it's, um, as air free as possible before it goes into the freezer. For the day of cooking, you are going to thaw it as, uh, I mean, as best you can, I think enough to get it into your yeah, slow cooker because exactly. um, really you just want to get it going. I personally like to thaw things fully, but I know lots of people don't and it, you know, it all gets slow cooked in the end. You got seven hours to worry about it. Um, you can just put it in your slow cooker and you can do this on the stove top as well. You really want to get it to a boil, turn it back down to simmer and do low and slow because you want that meat if to tenderize. If you're doing it on the stove. If top. you're doing it on the stove. You really want that meat to tenderize. You want those flavors to meld. Sometimes in this one, 
I will, if I'm finding it's still a little bit liquidy, I might add in some cornstarch in some cold water, but this is fine also without it. I think the, the barley in it kind of sops up some of that extra water and it does thicken up quite a bit. So um, it's delicious and it's a hit every time we make this one at home. This next recipe is our beef curry. It is so fast to put together because you're using beef stir fry strips and you can find those already cut at your butcher or in your grocery department. You're just gonna throw that into your large freezer bag, some chopped onion, some diced red and yellow pepper. You can also do your red and yellow pepper sliced if you prefer, it works both ways. Um, and then a can of diced tomatoes, some curry paste, a little bit of sugar just to take out the acidity from the tomatoes, and some heavy cream. You're gonna squish that all together in your bag, get your air out, seal it, freeze it. On the day you go to cook this, you of course thaw it or thaw it well enough to be able to dump it into your slow cooker and you're just going to cook that for four to six hours on low. You can also stir fry this in a skillet if you prefer. So it's a really versatile one. So you can serve this on the side of or on top of rice or something that my kids like to do is wrap it in flour tortillas. Oh, that would be like having it with naan. Yeah. That would be good. Oh, and or you could totally do it with naan. You could totally do it but with naan. Yes, wrap it in flour tortillas is a great way to go with this. And at our house, we would also add possibly potatoes into the mix because we are a real potato household. I've, I've been very clear about this. <laughs> that, that we, have, we eat a lot of potatoes at our house. This actually would go really nicely on top of mashed potatoes or just a side boiled potatoes. Boiled potatoes are like God's gift to starch. <laughs> It's just the best thing. A little bit of salt and butter, primo. <laughs> you can tell she grew up on a farm. I like, grew up with a huge garden. And... My husband, I haven't had a garden in a few years. Yesterday, he's like, like, what would you think about like just one row of potatoes? He said, <laughs> and I'm like, get at it. You go, I'll buy them, I'll plant them, you harvest them, you store them. Um, it's a lot of work. And What's, what is it? The little red hen who does, I'll bake the bread and not I, said the cat, and not I, said yep. the, I, Sometimes I live like that at my house where nobody really wants to <laughs> like do the work, but they sure want to eat the potatoes. <laughs> reap the rewards. They want to yeah. reap the rewards. And so I, um, yeah, I give them the option. I'm like, you go right ahead and plant some potatoes. <laughs> they can be your potatoes. That's just fine. Um, there is something special about homegrown potatoes. This next recipe, is pizza casserole. Pizza casserole has been in our lives forever. 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 This is a total dump and go because you can dump it into the bag, obviously, but you can dump it into your slow cooker. You can do this on the stove. You can do this in your microwave because really everything that's going into this is cooked or just needs to come to temperature with the exception of the pasta. Right. So, okay, so it's dump, make your pasta and go. Okay. Yes. It's don't make your pasta and go. That's true. It's okay. We have an extra step in there because really it's so easy and it's so kid friendly. You're going to love it. Okay, so I have to tell you something about tell this Tell me about this recipe. We recently, or well, it's not that recent anymore. It's like over a month ago, but we did a big mega meal session where we, yeah, it. we'll put a link up there. We made over a hundred, or we made 140 freezer meals. Right on the nose. Um, plus one side dish. <laughs> Plus one side dish. Anyway. They count. You know, <laughs> they sort of For count. a girl who does not like math, she sure likes to count. <laughs> I love, I get so motivated counting the freezer meals. That's true. <laughs> but anyway. I'm like, just let this be over. Go so on. So <laughs> in the pizza casserole, we made uh, four, because when we do the mega sessions, we usually make four of everything. So we made four of them in that, you know, that okay. session. And so I've already made one for my kids love it so you know i've already made one in the slow cooker and on the day that i was making it and i went to cook the pasta to put in it i realized that i bet if we added just so a little more water yes we could cook the pasta right in it like a water yes, pot yes that's what, yes that's what i realized so i still have one of the pizza casseroles I have both of mine. and so we're going to experiment and we'll report back 
but we're pretty sure that we can make this like a full dough. I find this kind of a liquidy one anyway, especially in the slow cooker. Okay. I think we could just just add the pasta in. So we're gonna be experimenting with this whole one pot idea about the pizza casserole, but I'm pretty sure I think that you're it's totally right. Work. You're totally right. And yeah. here's the fun part. These recipes, even though we've been making them for years, there's still ways to improve upon them. There's still yes, ways that we change them. them. How much has the chicken asparagus bake oh. changed over the years? It now has bacon. Uh, right? <laughs> like, it's totally, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's evolved. And it just keeps getting better, I promise. You want two cups of ham that's been cubed. So really, go and get one of those picnic hams and chop it up and you'll get two cups out of that. Um, we're gonna add in your Parmesan cheese, some mozzarella cheese, um, a little bit of onion that's been finely chopped. So when I say you can do this in the microwave, you want to cook it long enough that your onion has started to soften, but really in the grand scheme of things, that's not even that important in this recipe. <laughs> uh, again, with the green pepper, you just want it nice and hot. Tomato sauce, some Italian seasoning, red pepper flakes, and then in another bag, we're going to add this two cups of small pasta. So we use the small shells and on the day of cooking, you're going to boil the pasta and yeah. then add it in at the end right before you eat it. But maybe you don't need to. Maybe, maybe this is add it right into the slow cooker and maybe like a tad of water, but I don't even know. I don't even know. So we're going to be experimenting with we that. We totally but are. And the tomato sauce here. This could totally be a red sauce recipe. Yes. And add extra zip. I mean, I know yeah. there's some other like red saucy kind of ingredients. Yeah, not really. Like, no, this would be good to do with red sauce. And you can do it any way that you need to do it to get it hot and on your plate or in a bowl. Your kids will love it. Somebody also suggested to do Italian ground sausage instead of the ham. Oh, you could totally do and that. And I might try that one of these times just yeah. to change it up a little bit. It's, it's pizza casserole. I, what can't you put in a pizza? Totally. You could throw some black olives in here. Like you whatever totally, you like. Oh, with your the pizza black flavors. olives? Yeah, I would. Yeah. So, with this pizza casserole, we're going to put the link in the description below. Um, actually, all of these recipes, except this next one that I'm going to tell you, are right on the you, website. Yeah, so you can find them in the description below. This next one is only in our Freezer Meals 101 Club. You, try these. Like, See how easy it is to just dump them in your bag and then have your bag in the freezer and then dump it in the crock pot and not have to worry about dinner. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you so much money because you can buy things in bulk. You're not going to be... You're not hitting the delivery no, app. You're, you're not. No, no drive throughs What no. skip the dishes? And I've never heard of it. You don't have those um, <laughs> vegetables or good intentions going moldy in your yeah, crispers. Right. Like all that's the things, right? right? But it also saves you all that mental space. Oh, so, totally. So this next one, which is the only one that's only available in the club, but it is tortellini soup. And it's so this easy. is another it's so one good. I've been making forever, like forever. So in your large freezer bag, you're going to put a chopped onion, some pasta sauce, minced garlic. Again, we're just using it from the jar, Italian seasoning, chili flakes, some mixed vegetables that are frozen. What I really like about this is that you can use any combination of frozen vegetables that you want. So you can use like, I like this one that has mushrooms and I think it's a California blend is what it's called, mm. but you can use the stir fry blends. You can use the really like more basic the old school um, with the corn, carrots, carrots and, peas. and peas. Yeah, whatever vegetables you want, you can fancy this up or you can have it be really simple. So um, then you're going to add, if you want to, some water and chicken or vegetable broth. Of course, if you wanna make this vegetarian, you're gonna do a vegetable broth. And you can save those and add them on the day that you cook this if you want to make your bag thinner and take up less space in your freezer. So it's totally up to you. You're just going to, you know, take out the excess air. If you chose to leave out the water or the broth, you're going to add a note on the bag to remind you to add those on the day of cooking. And then on the day you go to make this, you're going to thaw it, you're going to dump it into your slow cooker 
and cook that up for four to six hours on low. And then at the very end, you're gonna add four to five cups of a cheese tortellini into your crock pot just 15 minutes before you serve it. And that's what adds the heartiness to this recipe. It's a really good one for like a cold rainy day or mm -hmm. like it's just a hearty. Or if you soup. want to be in a crowd because it, yes. is, it ends up being quite big. Like that is two pounds of yeah. tortellini you're putting in. We like the Costco ones because it's got the three cheese tortellini and they come in packs of three. So when we are doing a mega session, we'll often buy two of those three packs and make six of these. So we yes. each get to go home with two or we'll find, we have lots of tortellini recipes. We, we, do. Have, we have lots of things to do with tortellini <laughs> because it's so easy and it's fresh pasta. So it cooks fast. Yeah. Um, so we do use it quite a bit, but this is so good. I will caution you. If you are going to eat this in 15 minutes, you need to sit down and eat this in 15 minutes because it's fresh pasta. If it sits for too much longer, it will yes. just soak up all of that moisture and you are eating. It's a stew. It's a stew yeah. and your pasta will go mushy if you wait too long. Yeah. Yes. So that that is a good caution about this recipe because yes, I have found that as well. Yeah. And, for and I mean, the flavors are great. You eat it anyway, but texture wise, if that's a thing for you, you, you need to get on it and get eating it. Our other tortellini recipes, like we have this baked um, tortellini alfredo that's mm. so amazing and very versatile. I've never overcooked that one and made nope. it mushy. And the skillet one. And the skillet one. Probably, the skillet one's probably my favorite of oh, all of them. Me too. Tortellini is your friend. It's all the things. Very, very versatile. And yeah. and like, like I said, it's hearty, even though this is a vegetarian soup. And, and you know how I feel about soups, if you're new here. <laughs> I am of the opinion that soup isn't always a meal. Sometimes like soup is a great appetizer or soup goes with a sandwich or you need a carb with the soup. Yeah, don't with this one because it is hearty. No. It truly is. No meat and no extra bun. Woo! Yeah, that, you, it's that's a game changer for something. me. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. So we have made five super versatile meals because with these dump and go we wanted to give you a lot of versatility and just show you what's possible yes so we've got chicken we've got vegetarian we've got beef we've got ham that's right we've got it all we've got it all and it's minimal prep yes like what we had to chop a couple of onions and carrots and a couple of peppers yeah minimal prep the rest it is dump and go Snap and bend, or bend and snap. <laughs> bend and snap. I'm not, I'm gonna say that for the rest Jump of my day. and go. Join me, have that in your head with you. Now I'm gonna have to watch the movie too, <laughs> just to stop. Every time that you're gonna take your meal out of your <laughs> freezer, and, and then you're gonna go and to put it go. in your <laughs> You're just gonna be like, Jump and go. And they're gonna hear your voice in their head. Al McPherson like, approves of this message. <laughs> True. Clearly, oh. Christy has watched that show a few too many times. But is there really too many times to watch Legally Blonde? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. It's so wholesome. No, and do you know so what else sweet. I love? It's so... When she gets dumped, oh, her yeah. sorority girls, they love her. They surround her. They lift her up. Yes. There is an opportunity there for a mean girl thing to happen. And it doesn't happen. They That's build each true. other up. As I women love, should. I love that. And even the whole bin and snack business. Like she is showing, oh, Jennifer Coolidge, how much do we love her? And she's, you know, like the whole thing. I just love that movie. It is just girl power. And I showed it to my, my daughter. Like we, uh, I'm going to watch it tonight with her. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> so we're going to put a video right there of some five ingredient dump and go <laughs> recipes. <laughs> yes. Uh, that check you can check out. out. And thank you for joining us today. We will see you next time. Happy cooking. <laughs>